Hello, the topic today is material requirements planning. My name is Michael Sullivan. I'm a solution consultant at BSP. I've been at NetSuite for eight years. Uh, prior to the eight years at NetSuite, I spent around 20 plus years in manufacturing and distribution, working with several mid to large ERP companies in Europe and North America. And I will walk you through some of the major changes compared to supply and demand planning that was uh, the key part of replenishment in that suite before. So a couple of things, again, as I mentioned, enhancements and replacement to demand and supply planning, how the distribution resource planning is integrated into the MRP. Uh, we'll look at the buyer workbench, which is brand new. Look at alerts, exceptions, demand and supply. Look at some views along availability timelines. And then you'll see how it integrates into the supply allocation engine. So a couple things here from a list that we're gonna go through. We're gonna go through all of the elements of the setup, item categories, item groups, row groups, look at item. What we're gonna do is put all that together into a supply plan definition will run the MRP engine. Before we do that, we'll look at a demand plan, we'll look at the planning workbench, we'll create purchase order suggestions, we'll convert them to a PO. A couple of flowcharts. This is what it used to look like before MRP came along. You had a demand plan and you had a supply plan. The demand plan could be created manually or through multiple algorithms that used historical data. Linear regression, moving average, seasonal forecast, or it could look at actual forecasting data. You could also import from Excel. Once that demand was created, the supply plan would run, it would create a suggestion either for a work order or a purchase order, and you would convert those into a PO or a work order. So the way it looks like today, is that reality you don't need uh, demand planning at all anymore. Demand planning really would just be used if you need a forecast. So if you're purchasing you know, from overseas, you have long lead times, maybe you would have a demand flowing into MRP, kind of like this flow chart, uh, but you don't need it at all anymore. So in reality, MRP runs on its own, it's looking at existing inventory, sales orders, transfer orders, work orders, purchase orders, and inbound containers, and is looking at your items, the preferences on how you set everything up. And then once MRP runs, you have a planning workbench, you can look and review at information, filter data, release it, and then it flows back into the traditional order items and mass create work order screens, which you then convert into POs and work orders. So let's go into NetSuite itself, and we'll start at the left, and we'll move over to the right. And you would find these just, you know, you would find these right here, planning item categories, planning item groups, and planning rule groups. So think of these really, it's a grouping mechanism for parts. The item categories is really pretty basic. It's just a record that you're going to tie together and you just give it a name. The item groups get a little bit more sophisticated. Here, what we're doing is we're tying together multiple, potentially multiple item categories, right? So think of you got screws and you got paper clips and you got, I don't know, category number three, drills. Um, and you want to tie those all together from, from an MRP perspective, but potentially also look at them separately, right? So what I've done here is you can select either specific items, which doesn't make a lot of sense unless you only sell a few items. What you're really doing is you're grouping them together and you're going to then pick the category here. So I created furniture too. 
and I'm grouping them together. So as you can see here, I could have multiple different groups, right? I could add another one, specific items, and again, I'm grouping them together. If you have multiple locations, that is when you would set up a planning row group. Otherwise, you don't need this at all. The idea is that you are defining how materials are being transferred. So again, I'm saying this for a specific item category. So for all of the items that I'm going to link to Furniture 2, I am going to transfer inventory to Boston, and I'm transferring it from San Francisco, and my lead time is three days. Theoretically, I could have different items being transferred you know, from Boston to San Francisco, or if I had multiple locations, right? I could set up multiple different transfer rules. So this is really distribution resource planning, right? Planning on which items are going to be replenished through which locations. So now I would have set up all of the basic elements, and then I would go to my item, and on the item record here, on this end table, as we scroll down a bit, you can see that I have a replenishment method of MRP. And I'm going to edit this so that we can take a look at this better. So as we scroll down, you'll see the drop down. Right, reorder point is not going away. Time phase is if you still want to continue to use supply and demand planning, you can. MRP and MPS here really don't do a lot of different features or functionality. It's really a grouping mechanism. And you'll see when I have an assembly item, what I'm doing is I'm using master production schedule and then I'm putting the components underneath. Here, I'm just using this. And then over here, this window uh, will pop up. So as soon as you do that, and then you can see that I am adding that planning category down at the bottom. We have mostly the same fields that you would recognize from demand and supply planning, right? So we have our locations, the times. Now for the work order items, there are several new fields around lead time calculation, which I'm not going to go through too much today or at all. But the, most of these fields here are the same as before, but you'll see this is going to have some impact. So this is going to give us some alerts um, anytime something is with uh, outside of my 10 day barrier or late demand, advanced warnings. And then if you're using a uh, demand plan or forecast, right, we have the typical fields here of backward and forward consumption, uh, demand planning fences, planning fences, rescheduling parameters. That hasn't really changed. So I'm just going to go back and cancel this here because we don't really need to change that. The next thing, once you've linked your item to that information, you're going to go in and you're going to create a supply plan definition. So that is marrying all of that together. So here's our furniture too. And what we've done here is if I go into editing, right, we have our rule. And this is the rule again for transfer orders. We are looking 180 days in the future. We are linking our planning item group. And we're saying generate pegging, pegging, meaning that it is going to peg demand to supply. Under scope, we're determining which locations are included. So in this case, two. And which sources of demand, right? So we could individually state them or we could state them together. And here I'm defining that the forecast is going to be consumed, right? So we're not doubling up on quantities. Again, let's go out of here. The last step now, obviously, is we would have transactions, right? We would have sales orders, um, right? And those sales orders 
as every normal sales order, right, has a quantity and it has a supply required date and it has an expected ship date and it has a location. And if you've watched the previous uh, web demo that I did, the allocation, right, it's allocating against inventory. This comes into play in the planning workbench. So now, from an MRP perspective, you actually go transaction supply refresh planning repository. And you can do a complete refresh or a net change, right? You can refresh item setup or and transactions, and you can define how far in advance, right? So if you have sales orders in six months, eight months, 12 months in advance, you may want to expand the date range here to include those. And if I just grab this one particular uh, slide plan definition, I would refresh the data and the system runs through two little loops, one refreshing the actual data itself and then creating the workbench information, which at that point in time, you can click on that and you would get into your workbench. So the workbench is the primary tool that a buyer or a production scheduler would use. So from left to right, what you'll see is under replenishment method, right? Those were our two drop downs. If I just do master production schedule, you'll see there's just one item. This is a manufacturer part. And when I explode it, this is actually the component from the bill of material. So think of it, if you have manufactured products, and you want to see the interrelationship of those components to its parent, you can see that right here through an indented. I'm just gonna grab the parts here, and this is just all items that I purchase. That means I buy them, I sell them, except for this one here, which is the one I consume through my manufacturer items. Remember those item categories, right? I can filter by those, or I can even filter by, you know, a specific item if I wanted to. I can filter by a specific location. And of course, I can remove the filter, which then brings back all the data. So if I just wanted to see Boston, and I click on that, and you can see the data changes pretty drastically. At the top here, you can filter across the entire dashboard to see actions, to see exceptions. So maybe all of the items that currently don't have activity, right? So think of your slow moving items or past due demand, past due supply. Or you wanna see only planned purchase orders or if you wanna see work orders as well. So as you tab through this, it filters everything. If you wanna get rid of that, you just hit the little X's and you're good to go. The same thing with demand, right? If I wanna see just safety stock, and there you go. If I wanna get rid of that, get rid of that. So at the left here, we have all the items. So that would be the high level filtering. I can do that same filtering though on an individual item or on a group of items here. So for example, if I went to look at actions here, right? I click right here and I can see that the system is saying, consider firming proposed plan purchase order. All right? Obviously the system is saying, if you don't do that soon, right, you can have an issue. And the way I explain this, to, to most uh, people in presentations is that uh, if you listen to the actions, you really shouldn't have exceptions. Again, listen to this, less of these, right? So the exceptions is then telling you, you have insufficient lead time potentially uh, because you didn't act upon what the system told you, which obviously is a challenge. Then from the supply perspective, right? You have 
suggestions on potentially what to purchase. And if you click the little icon here to see the pegging and you expand this arrow, you'll see that that quantity was generated on a combination of a forecast, a sales order, another forecast, and a sales order. So the system took the forecast, which was 50, subtracted, because I'm consuming from forecasts, subtracted the sales order amounts, right, and brought these coins in. Plus, remember, I already had five uh, in stock. So it's showing me basically what is pegged. And if it was allocated already, it would be showing it here. If I go to the little icon here, I can filter this by daily, weekly. And what this is showing me is forecasting information, sales order, transfer orders, total demand, right? So you can see the demand going across the top here as we scroll. And we can see our planned work orders, our current purchase orders, our projected available balance, right? So this is what the system is calculating, what our available balance will be based off of what the current system architecture is, right? And if I was to click on, let's say maybe something like this, right, I would get a slightly different picture. And really what this is doing is showing you as a buyer when inventory will be out. Now the system's obviously trying to counteract that through suggestions. So I could go item to item and decide what to purchase, but I could also go to supply if I wanted to. And then I could say, you know what, I wanna just focus on plant purchasers. And I tab out of here. And then you can see my start date here, right? So maybe I don't want to place a purchase order that really isn't due until the 17th of November now. And again, you can filter that by date ranges here to make sure you don't. But let's say I'm gonna grab these two just for the presentation purposes. I'm gonna release these. The system also allows me to create manual plan purchase orders. So I'm overriding the system and saying that I think that we need to put a plan PO in there because of something occurring. I'm going to release the two selected orders, and those are queuing up. So if you think of our flow chart here, what would have happened? Let's say if we're looking here, let's say we had a forecast, ran MRP planning workbench, I released it, it's gonna be in here right now. So let's go back to our order item screen. All right, just refresh really quickly. And Everything here is pretty well the same, except for this new tab, planned work orders. Here's our two items. And again, you have the ability to now overwrite what the system suggested. And at this point in time, you can overwrite the supplier as well. And then again, once you select those two and submit, it's just like before, it creates a purchase order for you at that point. So same concept if you were going to create a work order suggestion, that would flow into there. All right, so that's really the new functionality all around material requirements planning. Again, the big benefits are you have the workbench, you have much better messaging and action triggers, and the whole look and feel is much easier to use. All right, so if you're interested in this topic, feel free to contact BSP. The solution consultants and implementation people can definitely help you with this. Thank you for very much for listening. Hopefully we'll see each other again.